but super excited to have Leia and Brett here. And Brett's back again. He's, he's, he's so good with that. He's just, Sneaks he's good. In. He's just sticky. He's in there. That's what happens when you just show up. He just, that's his superpower. He shows up. <laughs> he didn't show up to the gym this morning, yes. though. <laughs> Yo, what's up? I'm Brett Ryan. Uh, I'm a digital marketing manager for a marketing agency, and I'm also a, a bartender here in one of the hottest spots in the Heights. They just opened. He's in the hottest spot already. They knew. I don't know where the one of the busiest bars thing. on the Heights right now. Do a thing. What is it called? Randy, right there. All right, all right, I don't know where right, to right. go. Okay. And then my name's Leah. Um, I was in the service industry for a little bit. Um, now I transitioned more into um, day trading and personal development. Yep. And you really got to give her some credit, too, because she was really here just to kind of support us emotionally yes. and morally <laughs> for this for this podcast. And then I'll, we just broke her into one. Because you know what? I'm interested in everybody's story and how we all got here. And this is actually the epitome of what the restaurant industry is, <laughs> is, is making calls on the fly, okay? Yeah. People don't show up. <laughs> and so you be like, in order to run a restaurant, if you don't know how to operate in chaos, then you will fucking fail. So, so that's what we're doing right now. We're operating under chaos. And so I, I definitely want to thank you so much for uh, you hopping on and helping us out right now. I yeah, appreciate for, it. Um, that's big. And yeah, I know uh, we're excited to uh, to get into this. So. Yeah. So it's crazy. It's like, like you just said, man, it's just crazy. One guy can be sweeping the floor one day. Next thing you know, it's like, yo, pick up the shaker. You're making tequila <laughs> yeah. shots right now. You, you've been promoted. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we're super passionate about, you know what I'm saying, understanding what this transition into entrepreneurship from being an actual bartender is. And I know a lot of us, we've all had that transition. I know you, you've been doing a lot with personal development and trying to help people, coach people through these transitions. What's, yes. How did you get started into this? Um, so I really got started um, with my trading academy that I'm in. Um, it's called iMaster Academy. Um, they really had a big community to help you build your personal development because you start to learn like trading is really 10% skill, 90% psychology, um, and the market really reflects your mind. Um, I'm someone that I've gone through a lot and no one really taught me how to develop myself, um, kind of like raise myself mentally, gone through everything I've gone through by myself. Um, and then getting into a community now it's like, okay read these books or listen to this podcast or learn how to forgive you know just simple things that people don't talk about um and then fitness as well like fitness is the main key to my personal development just like y'all i know y'all are gym rats yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. we i game. mean you know to be honest i mean we're gym rats because we all were fat at one point can we all yeah. be honest about it how, how much did you get to Brett? i was like 265 at one point dude i got up to 260. Yeah, what were you? i was like 245. i mean i'm shorter than these guys <laughs> <laughs> i'm not above six feet like so years so it's like yeah, that weight that weight hits different so i got a question do you think if we were all still that same weight, we would all have had a chance to be bartenders uh, absolutely not yeah do you I think if you were fat been. you probably would have had a chance in the service industry yeah no I definitely think there. I, I, de I only think that it would have stopped me from getting in certain doors. Right? Yeah. And I mean, I feel like it is a touchy subject. Yeah. But it's also just how the business is. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, like people want a certain look. Yeah. Right? And like, I've been told no to jobs. Like, I've been told I couldn't come in certain places as far as like working there. And they didn't give me a specific reason. But unfortunately, like, I'm also just aware of my surroundings. Yeah. <laughs> like, read the room. I, well, yeah. Read the room. And, and what do you want to do? Like, do I want to sit here and complain about it and be like, oh man, they didn't hire me because of this? Or do I want to change what I can and then try to get in the room? Or do I want to be like, all right, whatever, no problem, yeah, yeah. And, and bounce. Uh, I do want to touch on uh, a little bit of what you had said earlier, with just about you know going from work, learning about like just you being in yourself and working solo and then getting into groups outside of it. Mm -hmm. So I ended up watching a video where this lady was talking about how in school, they were really trying, it's almost like they're setting you up for, I don't want to say just failure, but to be like baseline, where it's like, hey, like you take tests by yourself. You do all these things by yourself. You don't want to make mistakes. And then I feel like as soon as like I got into the industry and as soon as I started like, you know, working with you guys on separate projects and all kinds of other things, it was like, all right, how do we work together? Yeah. Right, how do we spend more time together? Like, what are you learning? What are you learning? And then it's like, you go from wanting to do everything by yourself to, okay, man, now I need to collaborate with as many people as possible. So do you feel like that's what kind of like put you into a different level? Yes. Um, so yeah, definitely one thing is like getting uncomfortable is one thing I strive to do all the time. So it's like, okay, well, let me just get out there, talk to people. And then like understanding that we're all really ignorant to a lot, you know, ignorance is lack of knowledge. So let me go see what I can learn from every single person that I'm interacting with. Um, and then just like really seeing people like making, you know, six figures in a day. And it's like, okay, 
if they're able to do it, I can do it. Right. So now let me, you know, have some kind of mentor, some kind of support group to really help me flow easier through this. Because if not, I'm going to struggle. And then learning from a community, you're able to really like minimize your time you're wasting on lessons because they already did those lessons for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not making the same mistakes. Yes. Honestly, I think mentorships in every industry and communities are really big important. Did you have any mentors, I guess, along your process? Oh um, man, I, don't, I really think I did have a mentor in college that taught me the marketing game. Uh, it was actually the one that kind of got me out of the industry because I left the industry for a little bit. Because when I was at Del Frisco with you, um, he was starting up some companies in the woodlands and kind of brought me under his wing and was like, hey, I'm not going to pay you much, but uh, <laughs> I'll teach you everything I know and you can come work with me in the office. So I was like, bet, you know, get out of the industry. Wasn't making as much money, but he taught me, you know, everything from email integration to Facebook ads, Google ads, SEO, web development, a little bit there. Um, and really, yeah, just like that was probably the most mentorship I had uh, in college. And it was, I mean, really worthwhile. It's everything I do today. Right. Um, he taught yeah. me, at the, you know, the ins and outs of. That's dope, that's dope. And I know us, I know you always have your stories about the guys you learn from, like, okay, I want to do exactly what they're doing. And I'm going to take that from them and put that into my game. Yeah, that copycat, emulate, yeah. that, that's just the way you move. That's the way you move in the industry. Um, it's it's what drove me to, to get into certain places. It's what allowed me to work in certain bars and restaurants. Yeah. Like if I wasn't if I wasn't trying to study from this guy to pick up some knowledge on on why why they why they talk the way they talked about certain food, or if I didn't try to gain knowledge on certain spirits, or wondering how like you know these these craft cocktails like if I wasn't trying to you know be intrigued about those like learn more about craft, then I wouldn't have ended up in places like yeah. Colonial or yeah. places like Mad like. Yeah. You know, so it just it gave me more access. Like the the more knowledge I I realized, the more knowledge I gained, then the more access they led me to rooms. Yeah. And, and more access led me to bars. And then I feel like it just translates straight into business. Mm. It's like the the more you know about certain things, and it's like the more tables you can sit at. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like that's where that's where I'm at now. Is is I'm not really chasing money. I'm not I'm not ch like I don't want to say I'm not chasing opportunities because I am, but I'm chasing for access. Yeah. Like I want access. Yeah. To to certain people to to certain rooms. And and then I'll I'll go from there. Like I don't even need I, that I have plans for we have plans for for you know, a bunch of different things. Yeah. yeah, but I'm like I just need to be in the room. Yeah, like that's just how it's all always operating. I think growing up we always were not in even aware that these rooms existed. <laughs> the fact that we didn't even understand that a lot of these opportunities were available, like they seeing all, other friends who could just- fast food restaurant? Huh? If I knew, if I knew some motherfuckers <laughs> put up, strapped on an apron and were making yeah. a couple hundred dollars, yeah. I came up to Texas and find people 18 years old are making $1,000 a week, $2,000 a week. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Carl's Jr. And like, you gotta be kidding, <laughs> dog. So yeah, like even and then, yeah, man, talking about the, just the things that we've learned, you know, like from ways to, to make money. Like ways to, to handle your money, like how to where to put your money, like I don't buy any of that stuff. And it all, it all comes down to the personal development too. It's just like understanding, like you gotta you gotta have access to the rooms, but before you can get there, you gotta develop yourself as yes. a person. Yeah. yeah, kind of circling back to the personal development. Honestly, like I think it'd be cool for you guys to talk about like how has personal development elevated y'all's bartending experience and your industry experience? Because when I first got into it, y'all weren't really that big into self care and take care of your fitness. That's honestly something you kind of got, got go into ahead, together. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, talk that talk. Call us out, You're talking about him? Okay, all right. Call us out, man. Going back, that, going back to the fat conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, hey. how have y'all noticed that? How have y'all noticed how that has elevated your experience in the industry thus far? And you went to Miami and started a workout group and met so many people through that. Like, how, mm -hmm. talk about that. I see, it's like all of those things are really tied together that you bring it up. Like, I mean, when I went to my own personal weight loss journey that was almost like my simulated trauma but you know what i'm saying going through a year not going out i'm eating this i'm working out no matter what the pain is like okay now i can go work at any job and i can work six days seven days in a row i don't care because like now i've already told myself to do stuff that i don't want to do right. now when we started bartending with him like my thing with him was like he was great with personalities building relationships i'm like bro we gotta get you in shape, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, we get you in shape, you got here killing you, dog. But, but have you noticed more? Have you noticed that it's easier to connect with people, yeah. women, other guys? Yeah. It's an easier conversation topic when you're in shape or work out. It definitely is an easy conversation topic. It does. It's an additional networking opportunity too, because like that workout group, I made lifelong friends. Yeah. Like I mean, honestly, the position I'm in right now with the company that I built with somebody that was in my workout group. Mm -hmm. So it's like you see a bartender waking up running at 6 a.m. sunrise. It's like okay, 
there's 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 some depth there. Right. So a lot of times when you see somebody with a nice shape, it's already telling you like, okay, this is a person that has mental discipline. It's all these little intrinsic characteristics that you can understand from it. But other than that, I think as a bartender, you got to take care of yourself because it's a physical environment. It's almost like you're an athlete. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you're doing this all day. <laughs> you need to be taking yeah. care of your body, taking care of your muscle imbalances, and uh, it really does keep me from hitting the street sometimes too, knowing that I have to work out. It yeah. keeps the rest of my day in line. Yeah, I mean, and when when we started, we started bartending, and then you know, obviously getting into the workout phase. Um, it also, I say, either toned down our drinking. Or we were more strategic with our drinking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because in the back of our mind, I'm like, I know this motherfucker's going to be. And living right below me, I'm like, I'm going to be banging on my door <laughs> at 10 o'clock in the morning. Like, do I really want to be out till 4 a.m.? Like, yeah. So I think that's one of the things, too, where it, it helped us because now it was like, okay, now we're already going to be on the routine regardless of what we do. So one, it's either going to be I'm going to end up at this gym about to vomit yeah. or like, you know, I'm just not going to go out and party all night, yeah. every single night. Um, but then it was like, now we're coming into work more fresh. Yeah. Now we're coming into work, better attitude. Now we're coming into work ready to go, like locked in. Mm -hmm. And then that just takes you into another place. Like, so I think there's there's multiple different ways to look at it. But then there's other ways where I know I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten to work at certain places. I wouldn't have made certain connections if I wasn't in the mix. Like right now, like, you're at a bar with nothing but girls. You're the only guy that works there. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so that means you almost feel the pressure. Like, these are good-looking women, and you got to make sure that you look good just oh, to even yeah, be in the yeah. same room with them. For sure. There's no way you would have gotten that job. For sure. Overweight. Uh, yeah. 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 There's no way. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm telling you, like, the, the work now is, is, is get you in, and then um, you you do have to also balance that with, like, making sure you're, you're also relevant. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is a balance to it. It's like, <laughs> if I'm good, if I have to be, if I know that I have to be, out drinking certain nights or I have to at least be in the mix then I also know that okay well I have to be at the gym too yeah because I can't just go one way no, yeah I can't just be even when it doesn't even come to wait like you just can't be out drinking and then not do anything in the morning or yeah. not doing anything throughout the afternoon like if you're not just using your mind or, or what even watching the news or yeah. doing something you don't have nothing to talk about right. yeah so like, or like if you don't have nothing to talk about then like if you're not talking about what you did last night or you're not talking about what's going on in the world then what the fuck you got to say to this person? <laughs> yeah right like, now i know why you're only talking to people that are right next to you yeah, like, right. so yeah so i was gonna ask um do you feel like personal development increased your level of awareness which is to where you are now oh for sure yes for sure. i think so yeah it's just kind of looking inward and having to develop myself, I can sometimes identify these characteristics in other people and like, yo, you were where I was at one point and I know exactly what you need. So, I mean, it kind of goes back to the mentorship role and I think a lot of, that's what we do as humans. We really do want to help each other out. I think that's where the true happiness yeah. is. So I think that taught me in developing myself, like, you know what, I wish somebody would have helped me out in this way. So that's what I'm trying to provide to other people. Yeah, yeah I think that personal development is really the key to getting out of the industry. You know, that, that, that's your end goal is to really yeah. elevate to another level, whether that be higher management or running a place or something completely outside the industry. You have to go through that personal development of, you know, attaining leadership skills, attaining, you know, personal awareness, um, being able to communicate with others. Like those things are what's going to help you get out of the industry. Like, screw going to college. Like, yeah. You don't need a college degree yeah. to get somewhere else in life. Yeah. You have to work on yourself. And yeah. I think that's a big, a big part that a lot of people miss out on. And then when when working on yourself, like speaking about the mentoring, that's one of the ways that I learn the most is when I'm, when I'm schooling somebody yeah. on what I went through. Yeah. One, it's reminding me of like, okay, man, you really was out here doing something. <laughs> but then like just even hearing yourself like teach somebody something, you know, or give somebody some knowledge, that just sparks me. Like that's that's what gets me going. And so it's almost like I get to pass on what I what I know, and one that helps with building the confidence, that mm -hmm. helps with with one building the value, and then it also takes that person. When that person's like, "Bro, let's do," is like giving me game, like, yeah. and now that spreads, yeah. and now somebody else is finding out, like, okay, like I need to ask him what's going on, or I need to go, I need to go over and work with him, like. So I, I think it has a lot to do um, with with your with your movement. It mm -hmm. doesn't even matter if you want to get out of the industry or if you want to move in the industry or if you want to go from being a, a bartender to a manager. Like from for the bars, like we work with people that were trash all the time. Yeah. Like so, I know as a as a bar manager, like when I was a bartender, when when we worked at Boxies, we were developing people from they were coming from serving or they were coming from not even in the industry. Yeah. Working as our bar back, yeah. and then we're like, okay, this person's really gonna make quite a bit of money. We need to get them up to par yeah. quickly, yeah. so that at least the money that they're making yeah. they're, or that we're giving them, like they're earning. Yeah. And so then it's them going from that to them being a bartender themselves, like. 
I know as a, as a manager, if, if I'm seeing them, like, okay, man, like this, maybe the next person that we yeah. hire into management. I see those 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 situations were some of the most rewarding in bartending for me. Oh, for when sure. I have like some eighteen year old bar back come in, think he knows everything, and like I'm like, yo, you need to take trash out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, yo, the trash is cool. I don't want it. I don't like getting it down for stuff. You need to make sure that they're like right. you need to clean these plates off before you do that. You need to iron your shirt before you come in, man. We're gonna be presenting ourselves to people. Oh, like speak with your chest so that way they can hear you. Right. And all of a sudden they go from that to twenty one. Now they're bartending with you. Now you're making money and now you see him making moves and, and putting his money to this places and then later on they're like, yo, appreciate that, man. You kind of changed my life. And when really I was just like, I'm not about to be splitting money with you if you're gonna be acting <laughs> yeah. like this. <laughs> you ain't gonna be in my pocket. Right, straight up. Golly. Okay, so I have another question because this is something that I'm struggling with and getting in the habit of doing, but morning routines or just routines, daily routines to kind of get you to the next level. I think, man, that was when I went to Miami and obviously I went out there to bartend and I was in the streets heavy at first and like we were a new restaurant, new bars are giving me free bottles everywhere, the best clubs, bring girls, whatever. And then obviously COVID stopped everything. And so that's when I had a chance to really start doing my personal development. One of those things I ended up finding a guy that I started doing workouts with just on the beach because the gyms were closed. And then that's when I realized like, yo, if I get up, I have so much stuff to do in a day. Like if I'm waking up six o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock, I'm doing my workout. It's like, all right, cool. Let me just go to the grocery store. All right, man, let me just cook something. And now I'm just freed up another two or three hours throughout my day to do and stuff. So once I started like having those small wins throughout the day, that really just started increasing my confidence towards bigger tasks in my life. So I think that's, okay. that's a, like I say, it's almost like simulated trauma where you're just like forcing yourself to do stuff you don't want to do. And then it's like just really sharpening your personality all around. Yeah, yeah it, it's fundamental. I know like even just the opportunities that I got after I stopped just like waking up just to go to work. Because yeah. in the beginning when I got in the industry, that's what it was. It was like work. I'd work long hours, work in doubles, but I'd go to sleep and then I'd wake up maybe an hour before my shift and then I'm coming into work. Once it once that changed to where it's like when we when we started working together, where it was like, okay, bet, like now I'm waking up at ten AM, now I'm working out, now I have multiple hours of my day, like now I can actually start just doing something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, making some other moves to where now like that's that's how I have to start my day. Yeah. Like I, I have to be up early and I wanna go straight to the gym. Yeah. I don't it's almost like my coffee. Yeah. Like I, I don't wanna I don't wanna go do something else. All I wanna do is wake up, go to the gym and then I can figure the rest out. Yeah. Like I I have to have that though, and that's what balances out just the rest of my day. You said something on the last episode, it's like, even though you're not at work, you're still always working. You're still yeah. always on the clock. So everything yeah. you'd be doing, like- You're missing opportunities too. Yeah, like you're you need to be doing outreach. People, all are, people are in the, sorry to cut you off, like people in business, like they're making their plans at eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. If you're waking up at five o'clock, this person already could have booked a table over here. Yeah. They already made plans to go out for a happy hour. If you're waking up at four, cause your shift's at six, these people are already at happy hour. Yeah. Like, that don't make sure. no sense. Yeah. Like, no, like you gotta be up, like you wanna be up earlier. I, uh, I'm, I'm definitely aware that I've set myself back a little bit by falling into that trap, but it also taught me a lot of lessons. And I'm very aware of the people in the industry that I've seen grow substantially. And I'm like, this person was up all the time. Yeah. This person, like, they're on their phone. They were strategic. Like, they were making connections or they were planning stuff out early in the day. It's a big difference. And you can make a lot more jumps. Like, you're talking mm -hmm. about from people that are still bartending to people who are now running clubs, now mm -hmm. GM of spots, now are owning spots. Like. It's, it's, it's what happened yeah. man. Like, I mean the successful people like you see honestly my inspiration is The Rock I see The Rock just be working out at 4 o'clock in the morning you see Kobe Bryant talking about he wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning I was like okay like if these guys are doing it then that's the fucking move yeah. what what has been your issues specifically Me? you Wait, why, why are you having a hard time waking up um that snooze <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> the snooze button the snooze. um I don't know but if I do wake up later then my alarm i am in the habit now that i have to take a cold shower mm, so that's kind of just like saying, my okay. thing um it's just breaking bad habits really yeah. breaking those bad habits is my thing yeah i think i don't know if you mentioned earlier or off camera you mentioned something about being uncomfortable and i think that was like kind of one of the things to like building discipline is being okay with being uncomfortable yeah like that's something i struggle with because when i wake up in the morning i'm like damn i'm tired like you know, I just worked, you know, a full full eight hours with my normal job, and then I went and bartended for, you know, six hours, and now now it's already 10 o'clock, and I need to get up and start doing shit. Like, it's a really about being okay with being tired or being, you know, hungry or whatever, mm -hmm. like pushing through those mental uh, blocks to do what you need to get done is like the big thing. Like yeah, it's like, most of the life is just not happiness, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not comfortability. Like, that's yeah. only like small point in time. 
So understanding how to not always strive for that point in time and understanding how to survive in those other points in time yeah. is really what personal development is. Yeah. Man, man. well, it was a great conversation. Yeah. I appreciate you pulling up. Yes. What's, uh, what's your social media? How do we tap in with you? Uh, my social media is Chavez Leah, L-E-A-H, Fit. There we go. And uh, make sure you guys tap into our online community. Come meet some other bartenders, a lot of personal development, a lot of money making strategies. I mean, you got Hector in there. He's, he's going to definitely keep you accountable. We'll be there, man. We'll be there. All right, y'all. Peace. Oh.